Jay here from Flipping Cars for Fun and on this episode we have a 2012 Jeep Compass and today I'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step process of what it took to get this car ready to sell. Today I'm going to show you how I made over $3,000 in profit just flipping this one car. I'm going to show you all of the mechanical things I had to do to it. Today you're going to learn how to flip cars. Let's get into it. Okay, just taking delivery of this 2012 Jeep Compass. Really, really clean car. You guys remember the Jeep from one of our last videos, depending when this video comes out. This one is already sold. They're taking it tomorrow. So this is our Jeep. Very clean, not bad at all. Our transporter left the keys right here by the tire. Let's open it up looking good okay this will be our first start now this one has a couple problems with it we'll go over that she's starting right up like always we got no gas at all guys it's completely on e so i gotta hurry up and run and get some gas back with our gas right this seems to be a common theme for me uh getting the cars with no gas at all <laughs> i don't blame the dealers for not putting gas in the car but i do wish i had a little bit of gas to get this thing going uh but that's just how it is. Of course, I got my funnel, like always. This is like the second car in a row on the channel. I had to put gas in. But it is what it is. So that should give us enough gas to go for our test drive and to see how this thing is running and to get it to a gas station ASAP. Okay, so we're off. We're gonna see how this thing feels. Step on it. Feels good overall doesn't feel bad at all i do hear a slight rubbing coming from the right passenger side rare i'm not sure if it's a tire or a wheel bearing but the car does feel good other than that uh shocks brakes uh struts they feel good they're not clunking or anything like that i just got that rub on the rare these cars that i've been getting have been infamous for wheel bearings okay so we got our jeep compass home let's go over this thing and see what's wrong with it now if you guys remember on my channel i had a jeep compass before that had so much rust and i'm very impressed by this car because it doesn't have any rust at all let me show you now one of the first things i notice usually on the hoods of the jeeps they usually have rust going all along the line of here and like on the sides and stuff like that it's like a normal thing with these jeep compasses but luckily with this particular one there is no rust along the line at all which is crazy to me i never saw that before and this is a pa car so it's in the north but what i did notice is it does have a big dent but i'm not too worried about this dent it doesn't have any cracking in the paint and i'm almost sure i can pop this dent out i'm, I'm almost sure i can maybe we can get this dent out without doing any body work we'll pop it from under the hood or we'll be able to suck it out uh this way now really on a car i don't see any like i said any other rust usually on these jeeps you'll get a lot of rust on the quarter panels over here if you guys remember the last jeep i had we had rust over here on the uh trunk lid the body is great besides the dent in the hood tires look good one of the other issues that i see is that this hubcap is cracked so i didn't even know jeeps had hubcaps so this hubcap is going over the actual rim you can see that there's a crack here and a crack here so i guess we have two options we can remove the hubcaps fully or we can just change this one you know if i want to spend the extra 30 40 bucks to change this one and they're all missing the caps that go on the wheels there's no cap here there's no caps all around the car now when i did purchase this thing it did have a code on it now that code is a p2050 our intake manifold running position sensor now a lot of people say how do you do the research when you buy the car how do you know what's wrong with it how do you try to figure it out basically i'll grab that code i'll look it up and do as much research as i can in such a short amount of time because remember Remember, we're buying these cars at auction so people will buy them before you if they already know the problem so i have to do my research as fast as i can and figure out what's wrong with the car as fast as possible and see if it's something that i can do or something that i can outsource for a good amount of money now based off this position sensor i see where it's at i looked online did my research it's something that i can do it's only three bolts but if it's not the position sensor i have to change the whole intake manifold that's something i can do as well but the first step is you want to go ahead and try to change that position sensor First, if that doesn't work, you're gonna have to change the whole intake manifold, which is right here. So let's go ahead, order that part and get it on the car and see if that makes a difference. Okay, so our intake runner manifold position sensor has arrived. Now, based off my research, this should work. If not, we're gonna have to change the whole intake right here in the front, which isn't that bad of a job. Costs a little bit more, but the sensor is located on the side. So this should be an easy job. Let's change it. Thank you. 
Okay, so we got our air a duct out the way that connects to here. And this is our sensor right here. Very, very simple part. You have three bolts um, and you can take that out. It's connected by a wire over here. You can remove that and remove the piece. So basically what this sensor does is it opens up the intake back and forth. So essentially what's happening here is the intake must be stuck in one position, which is basically uh, making the car sound bad, drive bad. It's just giving it bad performance, period. If that thing is not working, you, the intake won't open up back and forth. So what that does is basically control it. It makes it go like this. Now the test that we're gonna do is when we remove the sensor, we have to take a screwdriver and basically move the intake back and forth and see if it moves. If this is stuck, then this is a problem as well. So we'll try this first. We'll go ahead, take our screwdriver, see if it opens back and forth. If it doesn't, we have to change this whole piece. Okay, so let's take our bolts out. Now, I do wanna tell you guys out there that, you know, if you're gonna be into flipping cars, you gotta enjoy the process the best that you can. And that's why sometimes, you know, you just gotta be patient because most cars are gonna take longer than other cars. You know, you're gonna have to put that work in. Sometimes you're gonna have times where you, you know, things aren't working out the way you want them to work out. And some days you're gonna have that, that luck. Some days you're just gonna get that perfect car. You know, that car that nothing was wrong with it. You sold it so fast and everything like that. And then there's times where you gotta work a little harder than, than others, you know? And you gotta be prepared for that. I know a lot of people ask a lot of questions in the comments and stuff like that. How can I get started? Just be patient because it takes time and you know, it's just a process and that's just what it is. That's what car flipping is. And it's a lot of work, you know, it's a lot of work. And I do it for fun instead of being in front of a phone, instead of watching a TV series, I'd rather be doing something that's productive. Then you gotta start asking yourself questions like, why am I doing this? Am I doing this for financial freedom? Am I doing this uh, as a hobby? You know, it depends how far you wanna take it. I get so many questions about people, you know, um, how do I get started? What do I have to do? Just start, just get out there, you know, uh, make it happen. Don't make it so complicated, basically. It's not that serious. You know, you gotta get the ball rolling and eventually you build the network, you build the right people around you and then uh, you'll get rich off of this if you, if you want. You know, if you really wanna take it that far, uh, you can get rich off, you can get rich off of doing anything, if that's your goal. So a lot of people been asking me, if you just flip cars for fun, what do you do for a living? Well guys, I own a company called Easy Blade Shaving Products. All of our products are American made right here in our warehouse using the best ingredients on Mother Earth. We've been around since 2010. We carry shave products, beard products, hair products, you name it. Now, if you guys do want to support me and you like what I'm doing, go ahead, click the link below, buy a product, show some love. All of our products get shipped out every day fast. Appreciate the support, guys. Now, let's get back to the video. All right, looks like we got our part. There we go. Okay, let's compare the two parts together. So this one looks exactly the same. It even looks like it's in the same position as this one. So that's a good thing when we put it back in, it should line up uh, with the uh, intake. Okay, as for the intake over here, it's basically gonna go into that little slot right there and it basically turns that. So we're gonna take our screwdriver and test that out. Hope you guys can see this. Got our screwdriver right here. Let's hope this thing turns. Okay, it does turn nice and lightly, it's not stuck. And get a closer look. So it's basically turning, no problems. So we're gonna leave the intake in the position that we found it in, and then we're gonna put that sensor there, and hopefully it does the trick, and the cold goes away, and the car starts running better. I guess the hardest part here is just trying to line up that little slit inside of the uh, intake with the sensor. Screw it in, we're putting that on wrong. You're probably just gonna break something so or mess something up. So you wanna make sure that you line that up perfectly and it goes right through the slot. All right, so we got our code reader on. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the ignition on and we're gonna clear these codes. Okay, now that our codes are clear, let's go ahead and start the car and hopefully everything resets, guys. I can see no check engine light, obviously. So now we just gotta ride this thing out and see if that does the trick. Hopefully it works, guys. Let's run these monitors. Last night we changed the part on the car. As for the intake manifold, everything is looking good. But we have one issue. While I was riding the car out, the car is doing a lot of stuttering and like shaking, almost like a misfire. But I'm not 100% sure it's a misfire because I just don't know. There's no code telling me that there's a misfire. Usually when there's a misfire, the check engine lights 
starts flashing and you get some kind of code that's telling you that the cylinder is you know misfiring so that has me really worrying i'm hoping it's not the transmission on this car when i drove it the first time it was doing that on our test ride but the issue is i thought it was maybe that part with the intake i thought that was kind of messing with the engine and making a jump at this point i cannot tell if it's the engine jumping or if it's the transmission and i'm praying that it's not the transmission so i bought some spark plugs we're gonna go ahead and change those right now and pray for the best guys I really cannot start stressing anything because this is truly part of the game, guys. Like this comes with it. No matter what car you buy, when you're dealing with auctions, you're going to deal with stuff like this. Whether you're buying cars at auctions or Facebook Marketplace, you're going through a financial war because every person that's selling the car on the other side is trying to come up. They're trying to make money. So you really got to be prepared for reconditioning the car, which is recon. I bought it at a decent price to where if I had to change the, change the transmission, God forbid, I'll still make a little bit of money, but it won't be as high as I would have made if this transmission is not bad. But I'm hoping that it's really not bad at all. I got a good feeling that hopefully it's the spark plugs. But basically the car, when you're stepping on the gas, it's jolting, it's jolting, it's jolting. Could be a misfire, it could be something else. Anyway, guys, we're going to stay super positive. Let's change these spark plugs out and get this car back driving again. And hopefully that's what it was. These look pretty bad anyway. We really need to change these as well. So that's not good at all. Spark plugs are changed. Here we go on our test drive, we're off. I'm just praying this thing doesn't start stuttering and sputtering. All right, I'm hitting that gas hard. It seems to be clear, guys, it seems to be clear. And I'm, I'm hoping that it stays like this. It seems to be clear, guys, this is, uh, this is very good. If this thing doesn't start stuttering and sputtering, this means the joke is on them. And I'm not sure if they did it on purpose, but if, if this doesn't happen, that means that we win, we win. Okay guys, I am super, super happy. Uh, the stuttering, the sputtering stopped. I just had no idea of the things I would have went through if I had to change that transmission, plus the money that would have been spent. Let's go ahead and address this dent so we can get this out and start to get this car on the road so that we could sell this thing finally. So we have a few options here. Either we can go with a paintless dent removal tool, which is like hot glue and you know, one of those things they sell on Amazon and you kind of like put the hot glue on there, you try to pop it out. But my experience with that is every time I use that hot glue, it gets stuck to the hood and then you end up scraping the paint trying to get that hot glue off. So I hate those things. Another option is they sell something that's a, it's also a paintless dent removal as well, but it's basically called cold glue. And what that does is you pretty much, it's kind of like a clay. You put it on there and you pull, it's like a pulley and you pull, you pull it out and that glue sticks so hard to it, it pops out the dent on the hood. Unfortunately, I do not own one of those tools, but I am, am going to invest in a good one. They're about four to 500 bucks if you get a real good one. And I want to invest in that as well. As you guys know on my channel, I do paint cars. If you guys have been seeing any of the earlier videos, but that's mostly like April, May, June, July, which is, it just turned April over here now. So it's starting to get warm outside and I paint outside. I don't paint inside. I don't have a paint booth. So our other option is going to be to apply hot water and a plunger. If you guys saw my Chevy video a few videos back, I want to say like five to six videos back, I was able to pull out a quarter panel dent using a plunger and hot water. So I'm going to try that on this dent. I'm not sure if the plunger is going to be able to grip it because of the location of the dent. You can see there's not that much grip over here for me to go ahead and grab it with the plunger, but we're going to try right now anyway. So we're going to apply it, boiling hot water and I'm going to show you guys the concept. So I have my hot water I have my plunger I'm gonna show you guys the concept I'm gonna put a little bit of hot water here as you can see now what you want to do is basically be able to put it on there and pull now you can see I have a nice suction right here it's giving me a nice suction I can't get the plunger off there if I pull it you see that and that's basically what I want to do right here so we're gonna go ahead and give that a try I'm gonna go ahead and apply the hot water on there what the hot water is gonna do is basically soften up the metal you know make it flexible now let's go ahead and try to grip the area so we can pull it out and just like I said it's very very hard to grip because this whole area is just not allowing me to grip it unfortunately look at that so I can't grip it here because of the way the dent is but I can grip it right here you can see look See that? 
I can't do that here, unfortunately. Okay, guys, so I'm not gonna use hot glue. I don't have that cold glue puller. So the only other step would be to pull up the hood, make holes in the hood, and try to pop it out from the bottom. We're gonna pop this out today. Okay, so we got our drill right here. So basically, based off what I'm seeing here, the dent is right over here. So we're gonna have to maybe create a hole right here uh, to pop that out. Um, we're gonna try to match these holes that we have here. You can see there's already holes. Unfortunately, the holes didn't line up to exactly where the dent ended up happening at. All right, so I got my hand where it's at. Now, I don't wanna go too far up in there because then I will touch the bottom of the hood. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole right here as little as possible. Okay, so we got one here. I'm gonna go with another one right here just to have a little bit more uh, leverage to be able to go in there and pop out that dent. What I'm gonna do here is basically heat it up so that the metal is nice and soft and then I'm gonna try to push it out. What I have is like a screwdriver with like a little glove going over just to give it a nice push. Just with that one tap, we got this side out. We still have this little part right here and this little part right here. So we're just gonna have to work on it a little bit, continue to heat it up. So here's what we got. We kind of stuck with this dent over here. I can't get it out, guys. I, I know they do sell special tools to, you know, pop out dents from, you know, behind the panels and stuff like that. But I don't have the tools. I'm trying to get this car out of here. I'll definitely invest in those tools in the future. But this is basically what we have. It's a lot better. It looks worse on camera, actually. Um, but it's not that bad. It's just, just this little tiny dent right here. But it does look worse on camera based off the angles. Like this body line right here is a little dent on top of it. So the camera kind of makes it look crazy. But eh, it's not that bad at all. Okay, so I wanna see if we have a wheel bearing problem. So what I'm gonna do is shake the wheel, uh, 12 o'clock, six o'clock, and see if it moves. And then I also wanna try it the other way to see if it moves to see if we have a wheel bearing problem or a tire problem. But these tires look really good, so I don't think we have a problem with the tires at all. I'm also gonna feel around the tires to see if I have any bumps or anything like that, any warping, and that could tell me where that noise is coming from. Now I am mostly hearing it on this side, so I wanna give it a, a tug. And we do have some play, guys, on this side, just like I thought. Let me show you. It's a very, very slight movement. So we officially have another wheel baron on this channel, which is crazy. I want to say this is probably the fourth to fifth car. I don't even know. So we're going to go ahead and order these wheel bearings, get this thing changed out. I want to check the other side as well. I should just check all the wheel bearings anyway, just to make sure. Okay, let's check this side. Tiny bit of play. So we'll change both sides. Okay guys, so our rear wheel bearings are here. We're gonna go ahead and change these things. I got these things overnighted. Amazon specials, guys, you gotta love Amazon. We're gonna go ahead and change both the driver and passenger rears. The awesome part about this car is that it doesn't need detailing at all. Probably just a couple stains on the seat I gotta wipe off. Give it a nice wipe off inside, take it to the car wash, clean it, and she's ready to be listed, guys. So I think this would be a great time to remove these hubs. It looks like these things can't be just pulled off. It looks like they're actually being held by the lugs themselves. Okay, so it looks like our hubcaps are like attached to the back of the rim. As you can see, you have these clips right here. They pretty much attach the hubcap to the actual rim. Okay, it looks like we got a good rim under here. I mean, I think a good cleaning, some degreaser, and it should be good. It looks good. Here's the kicker. These cost about like 55 bucks brand new and $40 used. So to be honest, I could really just take those off and resell them on eBay or something like that. I might just make a profit keeping them and reselling them instead of buying one more. Okay guys, for the wheel bearing, this is a little different than, than the other ones because as you know, the other ones usually have to break this. This one has a drum in the back with the wheel bearing right here, which, basically, which is basically behind it. So it's a little different, but at least this one is a different concept and you can learn something new and I'm learning something new with this one as well. We did so many wheel bearings on this channel, guys. 
Definitely sound like they need to be changed. Okay, let's get to it. So here's the cool part about this car. It only has 109,000 miles, guys, which is incredible. I just think they were really trying to dump it at auction. I always buy from franchise dealers, so I'm not sure if they did it on purpose, but I think they put it a little low just based off the problems that they had, and they probably thought it was worse than it was. And we scored, guys. We scored. Uh, we passed our inspection. So that pretty much means that we can sell our car. It's a beautiful thing. All of our sensors are passed. The car is clear. So we got the wheel bearing basically off, but it's stuck, kind of rusted on the actual brake drum. So I got to go ahead and try to get like, maybe I'll put like a screw here and kind of push it or drill it so that it can pull away from the brake bracket. So basically here's what I have. I have a bolt with a nut on it and I also have another nut and I also have a washer. So what I'm going to do here is basically I'm going to put the washer through like this, put our bolt on the other side and I'm just gonna tighten it and that's pretty much gonna hopefully push this wheel bearing away from the plate. Just go ahead and give it a try. <laughs> it looks like that trick worked guys. Uh, as you can see, I put the bolt on there and then basically tighten it up on each side. And then from there, we tighten the bolt and it pushed it away. And what it did was it basically went against this and pushed it away from the plate. And then that plate eventually released the rusted out wheel bearing, guys. All right, we got a new wheel bearing on. Beautiful. She is ready to go. I'm gonna slap this tire on, give it a test drive, and get this thing out of here. We are here at the final lap, and as you can see, this car doesn't need any detailing, just like a cleanup. You can see that there's just a little dust on the seat that needs to be wiped off. Just a bunch of little garbage on the floor. Our back seats are the same thing. Really no stains, just dusty. Just needs to be wiped down and vacuumed. Same thing on our driver's side. It's a bunch of dirt and dust on the floor. We're gonna give the dash a nice wipe down. While I do that, let's go over the numbers for this car. Okay guys, before we go over the numbers, I just wanna let the inquiring minds know what I'm using here. I'm gonna use a degreaser and I'm just vacuuming the car. The car is super clean, nothing wrong with it, no stains on the seats. All I had to do was give it a wipe down with a degreaser. But this degreaser I bought from Walmart, I forget the name of it, you'll find it, it's purple something. Uh, and you could just use that two to one and that just degreases it and gives it a nice smell. It actually cleans seats and everything. This thing is good for everything. I learned that from a lot of detail guys on YouTube. So anyway, let's get into the numbers. Now, all in with shipping to me, this car came out to $2,494, guys. Very cheap, only 109,000 miles. Now, I was super surprised. I thought something was going to be really wrong with the car. I'm not sure if these guys, you know, thought they were getting me with the car, but it turns out we came up, guys. Okay, so I went ahead and bought the module for the car to help the um, valve cover move. That was only $32. I went ahead and bought the center caps for this car, which was only 20 bucks. Uh, I didn't show that on the, on the actual video. I went ahead and bought spark plugs for $25 and I bought the rear wheel bearings from Amazon for $87, guys, bringing us to a grand total of $2,708. Now, I'm going to go ahead and list this car at $6,500. I'm not taking any less than that. That's going to bring us to a grand total of $3,792, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, Jay here from Flipping Cars for Fun. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys want to show support to the channel, you can go on my website website easy blade and show some love guys appreciate you guys i will talk to you guys soon see you on the next one use coupon code flip if you want to save on the products